Let's move on to 3.2. Let's read that extract and read for meaning and understanding. Samango and vervet are two species of monkeys. So we have Samango monkeys and vervet monkeys. They occupy the same habitat. So in the same area, we can find Samango monkeys and we can find vervet monkeys. Researchers have recently discovered that a population of Samango monkeys were able to interbreed with vervet monkeys to produce offspring. But those offspring were infertile. So if the Samango crossed with the vervet and did produce offspring, they are infertile. They cannot go on producing Samango vervet combinations. Samango monkeys mating with Samango monkeys are going to produce viable or fertile offspring. Vervet monkeys mating with vervet monkeys are going to produce fertile vervet monkey babies. So our question is, define the term population. Look, three marks. We need to say three specific things about what defines a population. And here are your three things. Same species, so it's a group of individuals of the same species living in the same area so we can't say have a population of uh, elephant that are living in Africa and elephant that are living in India because they're not staying in the same area. And the third aspect to our definition of population is that they must, if they mate, they have the, they have the opportunity to mate, because they're living in the same area, they can recognize each other as members of the same species, maybe they sing the same song or do the same dance. If they mate, their offspring will be fertile. So there's one, two, three conditions that we must indicate in a definition of what a population is. Let's move on. Give one reason why some mango and vervet monkeys are two different species. If some mango monkeys mate with some mango monkeys, we have some mango offspring that are fertile. If vervet monkeys mate with vervet monkeys, we have vervet monkey babies that are fertile. But if we have some mango monkeys mating with vervet monkeys, we produce a little hybrid, but that hybrid is infertile. And that is one of the reproductive isolation mechanisms, that although these are two different species, they are unable to produce fertile or viable offspring. So one reason why they're considered to be two different species is that the offspring of a mating of Samango and vervet produces infertile offspring. Now it says list three mechanisms of reproductive isolation that are not mentioned above. So hybrid infertility is what we mentioned above, that the hybrid is infertile. And so there can be no Samango vervet uh, hybrids produced from a Samango vervet hybrid. But we're not allowed to mention that one because that one is mentioned in the example that we've done. We've got to mention three other mechanisms. We could mention temporal isolation. That's when the two species are kept isolated or separate 
because of time, seasons in the year, for example, or time of day that mating happens, anything to do with time we refer to as temporal isolation. So maybe the one species reproduces in summer and the other species reproduces in spring. So they're not reproductively ready at the same time of the year. Or if one mates in day and the one mates at night, they're not ever going to get together at the right time. We can also talk about something called ecological isolation. Ecological isolation refers to the kind of ecosystem that we find them in. If one species is used to, for example, living in a very dry ecosystem, and the other species is used to living in a very wet ecosystem, we're going to find that they, the dry ecosystem animals don't like to move into the wet ecosystem. And so maybe it's a case of food differences, that there's different food in the dry area to the wet area, and this is called ecological isolation. They are separated due to what we find in the ecosystems. A third mechanism would be behavioral. And we often see this happening, behavioral isolation. So this could happen, for example, when the one species has a certain mating call. The other species has a different mating call. So they're speaking different reproductive languages. It could be that the one is more higher pitched. It could be that the other one is much faster. It could be the one is much slower or quieter than the other, but they don't speak the same reproductive language. Another behavioral isolation could also relate to, never mind a mating call, but a little dance or behavior that they do as part of courtship in order to bring adults of the same species together. And if you can't recognize the dance or the courtship behavior, you're not going to realize that that organism is speaking to you about reproduction or is dancing to you about reproduction or like the peacock is showing those beautiful colors of the tail and making them vibrate. And so that means nothing to you. And so that's how they're kept reproductively isolated.